I must be talking about depression in women and estrogens and I'm starting my stopwatch. There we are. Um, depression is more common in women than men. I think we all know that. And <clears throat> there is a concept of reproductive depression. And the reason why it's more common is because of the relationship to mood and hormonal fluctuations. Um, Premenstrual, postnatal, and climacteric. And, but it's more than that. And if you look at these patients with reproductive depression, there are two other factors in them. They've got a past history of PMS. They have good mood during pregnancy. And they get postnatal depression. And then when the cycles come back, the depression becomes cyclical as premenstrual depression. At this stage, it can be misdiagnosed as bipolar disorder. And then they get older, the PMS gets worse into climacteric depression. So I'm really concerned about premenstrual syndrome and what psychiatrists call um, premenstrual dysphoric disorder, a term I hate, um, but we won't talk about that. And the way that it's frequently misdiagnosed by psychiatrists as bipolar disorder. Now, the treatment of PMS, first of all, I'd say you keep them away from doctors who don't understand or care about hormone therapy. And that, of course, is code for keep them away from psychiatrists. I mean, this is an endocrine condition. It is not a psychiatric condition. And if we talk about hormones in general, estrogens, by and large, improve mood. Testosterone improves energy, mood, and libido. And progesterone or progesterone often depresses mood, produces tiredness, bloating, etc. And this is probably the essential cause of clinical premenstrual depression, progesterone from their own cycle. The important thing if it, is to diagnose this, this condition. Uh, first of all, I've got to tell you the most important thing is that hormone levels are not helpful. So often, women with profound depression say that they are hormonal in origin. And they go to their, their doctor, their gynecologist, who takes blood, and of course is normal. It's normal because these are all premenopausal women. They'll have a low FSH and a normal estradiol. It may not be normal for them, may not be optimal for them, but they're premenopausal women. And they cannot be dismissed as not having a hormonal component in their depression because you found the normal eastern level. History is vital in making this diagnosis. And the history is the relationship to periods. Now, there's a clue. Relationship to periods, which psychiatrists often don't ask. PMS as a teenager is another clue. History of a good mood during pregnancy, and following pregnancy, there's postnatal depression, which gets worse with age, and they often have cyclical somatic disorders like headaches, breast pain, and bloating. Now, PMS is caused by the cyclical hormonal changes produced by the ovary following ovulation. And the effect of treatment should be the abolition of these changes by suppression of ovarian activity. There are many ways of doing this. Um, <clears throat> the original work was done on transdermal uh, patches. I now prefer gels, and I use estrogel or sandrena. There's transdermal estradiol. 
own implant, of course, for long-term therapy. And they need eastern eye levels of 600 picomoles. This is picomoles, not picograms. So we are now in the middle of the normal range. They're not industrial levels. So, or GNRH or ADBAC. Consider adding testosterone for depression and libido, required cytokoprogestin or IU of Mirena, if this has a uterus, and ultimately the most effective long-term therapy may be estradiol, testosterone, and Mirena coil, or even sometimes hysterectomy and BSO. And Bob Reed from Canada did this original study looking at the effect of hysterectomy and BSO in um, women with severe unresponsive PMS, lasting relief in all of them. We later did a study of 47 women we collected over 10 years, and these are the results. That virtually all are very satisfied. There's only one very dissatisfied out of 49 patients. Now, um, here is and this is not first-line therapy, but here is an effective cure for severe PMS. And you don't cure a psychiatric disorder by hysterectomy. But you can cure an endocrine disorder by hysterectomy, oophorectomy, and replacement hormones. And I would say replacement e-style and testosterone is virtually always necessary after BSO in premenopausal women. I have come across many women, and last month we published 10 of them, long-standing bipolar disorder, diagnosed by psychiatrists, often disappear when PMS is treated with estradiol or hysterectomy and BSO. This is just one case of an old patient I saw just two days ago for a review. I first saw age 39, 36, many visits, hospital visits, inpatients for manic depression, PMS since a teenager, two children age four and three, well during pregnancy, both times, got postnatal depression, both times. SSRIs didn't help, didn't take the lithium, East Isle patch, 99% better, like pregnancy, had gels, implants, just to an intolerance and a hysterectomy, and she's now well with no depression and no antidepressants. And um, I asked her to make a comment uh, um, before we publish this. Doctors don't understand what a near-death experience cycles can produce. So there are eight characteristics that we should ask if we're going to diagnose PMS rather than than the, the bipolar disorder. Depression related to the menstrual cycle. The relief of depression during pregnancy. Postnatal depression. PMS when periods return becomes worse with age. The coexistence of somatic disorders. Headaches, bloating, breast pain. <coughs> they usually have runs of seven to, to ten good days every month. That doesn't happen in bipolar disorder. <coughs> Has cyclical <psychological> depression, <coughs> but rarely had highs. <coughs> I've had radiotherapy but to my throat, hence the dry and the deep voice, but all's well. Um, I've, I just wanted to test out some of these questions. The first one, History of mild or severe PMS, all 10 patients that I wrote up had this. Relief of depression symptoms with pregnancy, all eight became pregnant. Depression started or recurred postpartum. Postnatal depression feature in all eight women who had pregnancies. And the safety of hormone therapy, it's very safe. These are young premenopausal women. Transdermal root has little or no effect on hepatic coagulation factors. Minimal progestogen 
or none after hysterectomy. We do know that the risk factor with HRT is almost certainly progestogen and not estrogen. And it's safer and more effective than antidepressants. And there's some of the complications of antidepressants. Stroke, certainly. Heart attacks, less. Renal failure with lithium. Pregnancy, newborn problems. Weight gain, which women hate. Loss of libido, which they hate. Confusion, sedation, tremor, arrhythmias, and they often don't work. We published this paper 20 years ago on the effect of transdermal estrogens on postnatal depression. And here we have them here, and the solid line is the improvement compared with placebo. And if you look at it a different way, and the, the, over these columns, you can see the very effective treatment effect of estrogens rather than placebo, even in women who had failed to respond to antidepressants. More than 50% didn't respond to antidepressants. And that's important because I do think the tipping point in these patients is postnatal depression. You get that wrong, you get that wrong, and they're doomed for the next five or ten years with antidepressants. And the history is all there. Premenstrual, good mood during pregnancy, postnatal depression, PMS, etc. And what they do need is Eastern therapy for postnatal depression. The tragedy is this paper of ours 25 years ago showing that postnatal depression responds to estrogens. It was a huge study. It was 60 patients over 10 months. Huge study by contemporary standards. Nobody has repeated it. No psychiatrist, the people that are concerned with depression, has repeated this study. Finally, <clears throat> do I have two minutes? Yes. I've, I've done a survey of, uh, of my patients, and this data I've just got in the last couple of days, so I haven't much thought about it. But we, we emailed one and a half thousand patients, of my patients, I've got the emails for. 500 opened the message, 100 didn't have depression, and this was only for patients who I've been treating, um, and not any depression, but the depression I think would respond. So here we are. The depression um, was more, I've got it here. Um, the top one, uh, depression, um, um, severe, oh, thank you, S severe in, oh, it doesn't matter, severe in 42%. Did you have PMS as a teenager? 68% had PMS as a teenager. Were you in good mood during pregnancy? Those who were pregnant did only 8% did not have a good mood during pregnancy. Very important feature in the history. Did you have postnatal depression? Those who were pregnant, about two thirds had postnatal depression, a very important point in the history. Did you have peri perimenopausal depression? There we are, yes, in more than half. Are you still having antidepressants? These were all having antidepressants when I saw them, no, nearly all. Um, and 47% had got rid of them, 12%, yes, but lower dose. Only 11% still having antidepressants. And the last one, has the hormone therapy been life-changing for you? Yes, for the better, 94%, 58%, no, 0%, none for the worse. So I just put it to you that this is a very important concept of treating women with this common condition of depression, which is commonly misdiagnosed and mistreated by people who should know better. That's the psychiatrists. Thank you. Thank you.